Hey y'all, just out in the garden today. I've got a lot to get done. Look at this borage. I have been so happy with the borage and the tomatoes seem to really like it. They do well together. You see the tomatoes are growing up here, looking real good. And we got this cabbage still going. Some got real eaten by those, by the slugs. We had some good rain and they really came out and I came out here and I got rid of them all. This one's looking real good, y'all. I almost feel like I could pick this soon. What do you think? And I'm telling you what, these cattle panels have been amazing for my squash. They're getting huge. Can you believe this? Look at this leaf. I don't think my leaves have ever been this large. And I've been seeing so many beneficial insects. I found a new one that I've never seen before. I didn't, it's called a pink ladybug. And they're a pretty pink. <laughs> and they're a little bit longer than a normal ladybug. You know, ladybugs are a little bit fat. These ones have a little slenderness to their appearance. And, and they are beneficial insects. They eat aphids and they love to eat all of the larva and eggs of the lady squash beetles and i've been seeing them out here and i've been looking looked up to identify what their eggs look like because i want to make sure i don't squish them i don't want to squish their eggs lady squash beetle their like their eggs are a little bit more pointy and long and the lady the pink ladybugs that are beneficial their eggs are a little bit more round to the top. And I'm still just been picking off the bad pests. Still seeing some. And of course I'm not gonna be perfect and that's why it's really great that I'm seeing these beneficial insects out here so they can kind of help me out. And these beans are really starting to climb. They liked that rain. And these Grapes, look at this. I'm just so excited about that. I can't wait. So one of the things I'm gonna be doing today, oh, I love these. Onions, bolted onions are pretty. Oh, you know what, look. The carrots are bolted real pretty. Look at these flowers. Check this out. Is this not beautiful? I mean, goodness gracious, they're really beautiful. Reminds me of a Queen Anne's lace, doesn't it? I wonder if they have a scent. No, they don't smell like anything. Now this row, these are my different squashes. They have the Crookneck squash and the zucchini. This one's doing great because I had a lot of organic matter here on this particular section. These ones are a little bit slower to grow. My hat's gonna blow off here. My squash seems to really love this silty soil that I collected from the pond. It seems to just, I wasn't quite sure how it worked, but goodness gracious, I mean, look at these. These are crookneck squashes mixed in with some beans, you see that? And they are doing beautifully. Got some flowers already coming up. Another thing I love about this borage is it really attracts the pollinators over to my plants. I mean, they love it. Look at this, they're all over. These potatoes, you see how they're starting to get a bit yellow, some of the leaves at the bottom, which is fine, that's normal. I'm just, and I'm not sure if I should go ahead and harvest them or not. Kind of debating. Now I took a peek. Let's see, it's quite moist down here, y'all. Here we go. You see, we've got a nice purple potato in there and there's tiny little white bugs. I don't, your, this camera's not gonna be able to pick it up. These are called springtails. Now, they're supposedly beneficial. They're not harming my potatoes. I heard that they can mess with the, start biting at the roots. But mainly what they do is they break down things into organic matter. They love piles of leaves and straw, and that's exactly what I have in here. So mostly that's what they're going after. But I'm 
I'm a little worried if I let them sit for too long that maybe I will get some pest issues. Kind of debating, do I just go ahead and pull them because they're decent sized already? So uh, Nathan, you know, he grew up in Utah on a, a little farm and they would just let them die off completely. And that's what I was thinking about doing. But since it's so much, it's more wet and moist out in our environment here, I worry about waiting that long. I've heard my friends that have done potatoes, they always start pulling them up after they start to flower. Now, look at this. This guy's just popping out of the ground here. So what I'm gonna do today, see this? This is a potato row that I did. It's not doing so good. And I think the reason why is when that tree came down. Oh my God! That tree came down! That was insane! It came down right on the patch and the chickens were all over the place and we were running around. I think things just got messed up. You know, the potatoes got rolled around and they didn't get to, they weren't able to establish themselves quick enough. And that's why they're, they're just not doing so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them up today because I need more space for more things. You see, this is the tobacco. These ones are a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna put these ones out today. And these are my peanuts, aren't they fun looking? Some are slower than others. So the ones that are bigger and that are starting, the roots are starting to come down at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys out with the tobacco. And I've got more nasturtiums coming up. And these are little, this Carolina Reaper pepper is taking forever to come up. And these are my tomatillos. Nate's gonna fix my arch for me today and that's where the tomatillos are gonna go. Check this out though. This is stevia. I've got a couple of these. I'd like to get a stevia patch going. I've heard the perennials, so they should keep com coming back each year, or I think they die off in the winter, but I'm not 100% sure. And this is some chamomile. I need to put this out in my little herb garden out there. Got more sunflowers going. I need to get more soil. See, I've got a couple in each here, so I need to kind of pull them apart and put them in bigger bins. You see, this time, the creeping time is starting to bloom. And it's doing great, guys. Look at how it's just covering. That's my goal. I want it to cover the ground here so I'm not having weed issues. And it will kind of just overlay, come over the rocks. And I'm going to let it kind of go out into the clover. And y'all, I've been having an issue here with, um, with a deer coming in my yard. Y'all remember, y'all remember the, the two little twins we saw in the woods? Well, this is her mama, and we know her mama, her name's Daisy. Our neighbor that used to live here, he was one of those people that would take care of deer, baby deer that needed help, like if their mother was shot or maybe run over, whatever the situation was. And he would raise these baby deer. And so we've known Daisy since she was a baby. Well, he moved and she's still around. And she's the funniest thing, y'all. She will eat the weirdest things that are supposed to be deer resistant. And she's been coming around every night, so I have to let the dogs out to chase her off because she's eating my plants. She's eating my roses. She ate, these were looking so pretty. All these purple flowers here, she ate these ones. Been eating the leaves off of my roses and she's eating the clover, that's fine. I don't mind that, but look. All my hydrangeas here. You see how she's like pricking off the, the ends? This butterfly bush is doing real good. And I noticed she must have gotten into the garden um, when we left the gate open. And I noticed that the potato flowers were just picked off randomly. So I think that she, she likes flowers evidently. Anyway, we're trying to keep her away from the garden. I'm fine with her. She's been out in the sheep pasture, which is fine because I have clover out there and I'm fine with her eating it. I just don't want her coming up here eating my flowers and stuff. I feel like I was gonna do something and I can't remember what it was. Oh, I think, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start ripping these potatoes out. I don't think I'm gonna get very much. I'm gonna bring this wheelbarrow over Since these were just buried in straw and leaves, they should come up pretty easy, but we'll see. Just 
curious here what we got here. Ooh. That's pretty easy. Not bad. And I'll debate whether I want to just go ahead and rip up the potatoes too this weekend. We'll see. Here's what I got. Obviously not very much. Some of them were kind of brown and getting kind of rotten, so I think, see like this one, I don't know. The purple ones definitely did a lot better. I had some Yukon Golds up at the front. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up this potato patch and we'll see what we get. I'm curious. It's how easy they'll come up too. We got some littler ones here. Nope, well, we'll just see what we get. For the most part, they pull up super easy. This one's a good size. You see? Bunch of them in there. But yeah, we are starting to get some pests, so I'm glad I went ahead and pulled them up. worried I'm gonna come across a pig spider in here. It's happened to me before. It's a little scary. I had to take a little break from the heat and there's something in that soil that is kind of poking my hands and almost like little needles. I don't know what it is so I have put some gloves on. I don't normally wear gloves. I prefer to just be bare hands in the dirt but something is poking me, I don't know. So I put this on and just kind of took a little break from the heat. I'll show you what we're getting so far. And that's what we got so far. Still got plenty more to go. Some have gotten eaten by some pests, so I'm glad I'm going, I'm doing this now. And I kind of wonder if I should have just gone ahead and pulled them up when they started flowering. Maybe next year, we'll try that. All right, let's get back to work. This is the second ring neck snake that I found in my potato, potato patch. You know, the girls have been putting these little guys in there for me and they are fat and happy. So we'll just let them go back in. Go on, little guy. There you go. Aren't they pretty? Pretty little guys. I don't think they get much bigger than that. Slowly creeping his way back down. I got all the potatoes out of here. We got a decent amount. Would love to have gotten more, but we really don't have that much space for a potato bed. It's about as best as we can do right now. Eventually we, we plan on expanding our garden and having another acre. And that's where I'll have my potatoes and corn and those kind of crops. Hey you, that looks good. Nate's uh He's making the arches much taller for me. I can walk through them and not get hit in the head, but Nate's a lot taller, me, taller than me, so this is gonna be really nice. And they'll have more room to really get up there. Well, yeah. And plus, you know, any trellis that you have below 14 inches or so, it's, it's just wasted. The plants yeah. don't need support when they're that short. So. They're doing good. This is my cherry tomato arch, so I'm excited about it. This will be so much nicer. Oh yeah. Last summer was just cobwebs in the face. They really start and, coming down yeah, and- Yeah, the plants grow under somewhat and it was just, it, yeah, I was always getting them in my face, so. Well, uh, I'm, I'm done with the potatoes. 
We didn't get a ton, but we got a lot more than we did last year. Yep. And we're so each year's getting a little bit better. That's all of them, huh? Yeah. Some got eaten, so I think like this one's all gross. Considering the size of our potato patch, I'm okay with that yeah, harvest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. And I think next year I might just harvest them when they start to produce their flowers because I lost some potatoes just from the bugs. It might work when you live out in the west to just let them dry out like you used to do. Mm -hmm. But where we have such humidity and sogginess, I'm just gonna let these potatoes dry out in the sun. So that looks good. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk under it. I'm gonna walk under it here. I got some dirt on your dress. That's really nice. I like that. You'll probably need a a stepping stool to yes, get up there. To get up there for sure. That's great. I'm excited. So I got six of these tobaccos here. And I got quite a few peanuts that are ready to go in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda do an alteration here when you walk into the gate here. Well, let's start this here. And I think I'm gonna have to put stakes down where they are to keep Maro from wanting to run in here. <laughs> you can see all the crimson clovers really died back. And we've got, now we've got little seeds. Look at that. So I kind of make little nests. I kind of dig around a little hole here through the crimson clover. And the soil here is decent. It's not perfect. And I think I've got a bunch of topsoil left. So when I'm done, I'll put some topsoil down on top. Let's put a tobacco first. Looks good. Got a little worm. That's good. This will be good too because eventually these tobacco do need some support. I'm all finished. I've got this little guy. I've, I went ahead and put some nasturtiums out here too, around the edges. Here's some of the smaller ones that were just starting to pop up, and I put some sunflowers in here as well. And I did that. Oh, it up on this side as well. And I think it will fill in real nice. Little boost. I put some fish fertilizer down as well. And Nathan fixed my arch back here. Now I've got a nice, big, tall arch, and I can go ahead and plant the tomatillos out here. I'll plant some sunflowers and then more nasturtiums down below. This little guy accidentally got uprooted during the process. So hopefully these little guys will kind of come back. All my marigold seeds are coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and when I get more potting soil, I will put these little guys in their own little containers and let them grow up and then I'll put them out in the garden. Wish I had done this sooner, but it still will be fine. Marigolds are amazing. They were still blooming, even in November after we had several frosts. It wasn't until it really started dropping and we got a really good, good hard frost where they died off. Then I kind of let, let them dry out and I collected the seeds from all of them. It worked out really well. I'm very excited about these. These are my cuckoo melons. I'm gonna be putting those on an arch. Yeah. Looking good. Here's my plan. You see how I've, I've just tied it to this side and that. Yep. You see how it wants to sag down in the middle. Right, you were talking about that, how it needs support. Right, my first thought was build a wooden frame. Mm -hmm. I've seen that done and I was like, ah, wood's gonna rot. It's gonna look ugly, it blocks out some of the light. My second thought was use some portions of these cut up to kind of weld a, a wire frame to support it. Mm -hmm. It's a habit of my occupation that every time I hear an airplane, I instinctively look up and try to figure out what kind of airplane it is. Yeah, Nate's an aircraft mechanic. So. I can't <laughs> stop it. It's like a reflex. Uh, all right. So here's my plan. This goes up. Oh, that's going to be nice. And we bow it in an upward direction. Yeah. And I'm about to tie some of this 
cable from here to there and pull these sides together just like a think of a bow bow and arrow bow. yeah you bend the wood which normally wants to lay flat you bend it into that arch and that string keeps it tight yep and gives it strength i'm excited this is doing so great. this is the bow and then we're gonna basically string it so it'll just have a couple of wires across inside still well above you know tripping hazard or <laughs> definitely above tripping hazard above like you know smacking you in the eyes or something yeah but yeah this is just shy of half of a cattle panel so the next one will go it'll take two panels to cover this and we'll have this really cool little that will be amazing you know tension arch you know if this works out really well i'm going to want to do this to all of them eventually not this year and maybe next year because it would be kind of amazing no rest for the wicked huh no it would be amazing to just go vertical and to have like like guard overhead gardening overhead gardening yeah where you just look up and and get whacked in the face with a cucumber exactly it sounds great i'm excited <laughs> I'm going in to get a new battery for this camera, but this is um this is the garlic that I picked. It's drying out pretty good. I just need to learn how to braid it. Whew, it's cooler inside. Hydrangeas are starting to bloom and I love cutting them off and putting them up here. It's so pretty. That seems to be working, huh, babe? Babe, I think I just invented something. Oh, I see how you did that. Yep got this here and that keeps it the way you need it to be and you have it on both sides yeah and it's quite strong I mean if you pull down on it it's oh, I can't reach it but yeah that's cool I think I just invented something yeah I'm excited this will be great oh this little guy needs let me get some twine I'll tie him up Would y'all check this out? Ta-da! <laughs> it's amazing! I love it! It worked out pretty well. Yeah, you did awesome, baby. So these little wires uh -huh. are like bow strings. Mm -hmm. They are what's pulling the walls together and keeping that bowed up. And it's, it's strong up there. I mean, I wouldn't walk on it, but it's going to hold up some some squash and some cucumbers and whatever else you grow on it. This is so fabulous. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, babe. I love it. I'm so excited. I just can't wait. They're going to start climbing and they're going to be overhead and it's going to be kind of epic, I think. I invented something today. You're the inventor. Overhead gardening. <laughs> it's going to be the new thing for us anyway. We will only have limited space and it's going to allow us to grow more food. Climbing up. Mommy, there's a frog over here. Yes, that's the frog. I showed y'all that frog last week. He's still at the same little spot. I think that's the same little guy. I saw him a few days ago. He's just helping me get rid of the bugs. You know, the more I think about this, the more I think about how many problems we just solved on accident. For yeah. one, you'll be gardening in the shade. Mm -hmm. For two, all the sunshine in the walkways that's normally wasted is going to go into the plants once they get up there for three the bugs always lay their eggs underneath the leaves yeah. so now we're going to be underneath the we plants can see them. you can inspect and your squish fruit them. and you can inspect for bugs and you're working in the shade and in the meantime the all these vining climbing plants are going to be so much healthier way up in the air <sighs> I think this is going to be great. Yes. Like I'm excited. I'm not excited to build more of them. I know that's what you're going to want. Well, we'll do this one this year and we'll just kind of slowly grow. If it, if it performs the way we are hoping, then probably next tax season is going to go into a massive order of cattle panels. Cattle panels. I'm happy. I'm hopeful. I like this. Yes, me too. 
Well, do you want to do anything else tonight? Are you ready to kind of go in for the night? And we just... can settle in. It's a, it's a long weekend. we got plenty of time to get things done. Yeah, that's true. Nate's got Monday off. Then I guess we'll see you all next time. And I'm excited. Everything's growing up. <laughs> we'll see y'all.